hello dear participants learn as you were not reaching your goal and as though you were scared of missing it with these kind words you all are once again welcome to the third session of the two days fourth workshop that is how to study the gene out how to study the expression of a gene in the form of a how to how the gene is sorry i extremely sorry how the gene is expressed in the form of a protein yesterday we have already discussed the various facts about the cloning of the dna fragments in the form of molecular cloning reproductive cloning and therapeutic cloning along with their respective applications during the first session and in the second session we dealt with cloning vectors what are their properties what are their characteristics with how many types of cloning vectors are there along with the same manner the expression vectors now today we have again two sessions that is screening of the colonies on the basis of blue and white screening followed by the fourth session containing purification of protein and protein estimation these two sessions are followed by the feedback session without wasting the time now we are going to start the third session i am very proud to invite aditi parekh she is pursuing mtech biotechnology very hard worker and the topper of her batch to just discuss some important points on the screening of the colonies that is blue white colonies aditi parekh yes. thank you ma'am for such a wonderful introduction so a very good evening to everyone so i would like uh, to welcome all of you to my today's pre presentation about the blue white screening i will uh, explain it what it is and how it is performed so let's start off with some basic things like transformation as most of the things about cloning and vectors uh, have already been discussed in great detail in the yesterday's uh, sessions we won't go into deep but i would like to just brush up some of our knowledge so that uh, we can move ahead smoothly as the uh, dna transformation is the process during which a plasmid or a vector carrying a specific gene of interest is transformed into another cell often the bacteria so we can see here we have a plasmid which is a circular uh, circular genetic component of the bacteria in most of the case, uh, cases the process start with a procedure to modify the original vector by cloning the target sequence into the polylinker region of the vector this is done by cutting the vector with the help of a restriction enzyme uh, that linearize it the polylinker region of it then the target fragment which has to be inserted is also cut with the same restriction enzyme so uh, so that it has ends compatible with the ends of the vector the two fragments are then combined using the dna ligase the goal of the preliminary step is to modify the original vector by inserting the sequence of interest into the multiple cloning site this whole process occurs in a small centrifuge tube and if it works properly we end up with a mixture that contains few copies of the desired vector mixed in with the copies of the cut vector the dna fragment and because the enzymatic reaction is involved it may or may not work uh, perfectly so there may also be some copies of the original vector present present the next step the next step uh, requires the getting uh, the desired vector into the bacterial cell that can then be used to manufacture large quantities of uh, desired sequence the strat the strategy uh, used to get a plasmin into bacterial cell is called as transformation as we have already discussed few min uh, minutes ago it involves starting with a culture of bacterial cell 
that have been specifically grown in such a way that it is more likely to take up the plasmid when uh, transformation is carried. These cells, these transformed cells are called as competent cells. These cells are combined with the vector reaction mixture and given a heat shock to create the conditions where some of the plasmids are capable of passing up in the cells through their outer uh, membrane. After the transformation, the tubes of the competent cell may contain, um, uh, may consist of some of the cells that do not even contain a plasmid because they did not take up the DNA, cells that have taken up the original vector, and others that may have the desired vector with the gene of interest inserted into the polylinker site. So before, uh, so the first step is to uh, select the bacteria that have taken up or original uh, that have taken up the DNA fragment or the original vector, and that do not contain the plasmid. So we have to select that. Identification of these requires the presence of suitable marker uh, marker genes on the vector molecule whose expression provide a means of identifying cell containing it. Marker genes can be distinguished uh, broadly into two categories. One are the selectable markers, for example, the antibiotic resistance gene or the screenable markers, for example, the Lexi gene. Uh, within the multiple sequence uh, multiple cloning site the vector used for recombination purpose are engineered to contain a gene which confers resistance to an antibiotic after the transformation has been conducted the cells are plated on an agar medium containing antibiotic to select cell transformed by the vectors in simple words uh, in simple words the medium may contain the antibiotic agents and the plasmid vector engineered to carry out transformation has antibiotic resistance site. Therefore, the cells which have taken up the vector would survive in the medium and the cells which do not have uh, taken up the vector would die in the media. Moving forward to the next topic, that is the recombinant screening. A selective media enables transformation to be distinguished from non transformants The next problem uh, that we may face is to determine which of the transformed colonies comprise cells that contain recombinant DNA molecule and which contains self ligated vector molecule. For this purpose, recombinant screening uh, is done. So the, these, uh, this agar plate, the pictorial depiction of which shows that some of the colonies may be of the recombinant molecule and some of the uh, colonies of the self-ligated vector. For this purpose, we can, uh, we can perform blue-white screening, which is a rapid and efficient technique for the identification of recombinant bacteria. For this purpose, a selectable marker gene is uh, uh, selectable marker gene is uh, required the uh, sorry screenable marker gene such genes produces enzymes which give a specific color in the presence of particular uh, particular substances for example the lexi gene encodes beta galactosidase an enzyme that splits lactose into glucose and galactose beta galactosidase also acts in a acts on a colorless substances X gel and develops blue color. The presence of beta galactosidase in the system can be assayed in the presence of X gel. So moving to, uh, towards the next topic, that is how does the blue, uh, blue white screening works in case of the non recombinants for screening the clones containing recombinant DNA, chromogenic substance known as X gel is added to the agar plate. If the beta galactosidase uh, is produced, uh, that is, we can uh, see in the slide, beta galactosidase, uh, beta galactosidase is produced. X gel is hydrolyzed to form 5 bromo 4 chloroindoxyl, which spontaneously dimerize to produce an insoluble blue color 
uh, pigment called as 5,5-dibromo-4,4-dichloro-indigo. The colony is formed by non-recombinant cell. Therefore, that is, it, uh, it appears blue in the color. One thing to notice is uh, I have written that IPTG optional. So what is IPTG? IPTG uh, deabbreviated as isopropyl beta D1 thiogalactopyranocide is used along with the X gel for blue white screening. IPTG is a non uh, metabolizable analog of galactose that produces the expression that induces the expression of Lexi gene. It should be noted that IPD, IPTG is not a substrate for beta galactosidase but only an induce, uh, inducer. For visual purposes, chromogenic substance like X gel has to be used. So uh, there will be blue colonies observed on the plate, and it infers that no gene of interest has been inserted in the bacterial cells. For the uh, recombinant cells, the multiple cloning site is present within the Lexi sequence in the plasmid vector. This sequence can be nicked and nicked by a restriction enzyme to insert the foreign DNA, which eventually disrupt the Lexi gene. When a plasmid vector containing foreign DNA is taken up by the host E. coli, the alpha complementation does not occur. Therefore, a non-functional beta galactoside enzyme is so there will be no production of beta galactosidase enzyme. So this will eventually uh, lead to no formation of further uh, products such as 5,5-dibromo-4,4-dichloro-indigo that is the colored uh, uh, compound produced by the reaction of X gel is not produced. Therefore, there will be a process there will be a process occur during uh, the these reaction that is called as the insertional activation inactivation if the gene in, is inserted into the lag z clone will not be able to produce a functional beta galactoside side is hence blue colored colonies indicate the presence of an active enzyme and the absence of insert within a absolute uh, and the absence of insert is shown by a blue color colony, whereas colorless uh, colonies indicate presence of an insert. That is insertional inactivation. White colonies and the uh, gene of interest is inserted. So uh, this was when we were studying both the blue colonies and the white colonies separately but this is not the case in the practical life we'll get both the blue and green uh, blue and white colonies on the same plate as we can see here some other white colonies that contains the insert gene insert and the blue colonies that do not con uh, contain the insert so we uh, for the bulk production of the particular component we need to pick up white colonies that contains the recombinant and we, and we can further culture them. So after the culture has been done, we need to purify and store the protein for the future purpose. And this step will be uh, discussed in detail in the upcoming session. So I will briefly discuss it. We will uh, pallet down the bacteria when performing the column chromatography. Lyse the cell, bind the plasmid to the column, then we can elute the substance and store it for the future purpose. To summarize the session, there will be three conditions. There will be three types of cell when we are performing any culture uh, related to transformation. One will be, there will be bacteria with no plasmid bacteria containing original vector and bacteria containing vector with insert. So when these three types of cells are cultured normally in LB media, there will be colonies of bacteria with no, no plasmid, 
with original vector and vector with the insert but when we add ampicillin to the culture there will be no colonies of the bacterial cell that has no plasmid because it will be uh, not it won't be having any resistance site in the vector the original vector will survive because it will have the self ligated vector and hence the restriction site vector when the insert will survive when we are plating all these uh, three types of cell on an x x gel plate there will be no sign of a uh, bacteria with no plasmid contain uh, composition in original vector case there will be blue colonies that we don't desire and in case of vector with insert will we will get white colonies that can be further cultured and the bacterial can be purified and stored bacterial component can be purified and stored so these are the references thank you uh, very much i hope i was able to convey all the facts uh, and important information regarding the uh, blue white screening and now i would like to request ms shivangi shivasta she is second year biotech student at school of biotechnology and she'll be discussing about the protein pr uh, purification over to you shivangi describing the purification technique i would be uh, i would like to describe about or discuss about the um, basics of protein so what are they actually proteins are organic macromolecules uh, that, that are very essential for all the lives as well as for virus also uh, proteins play an important role in structural as well as functional fundamentals of life and we uh, sometimes we are assuming like proteins are very small so they can contain only less amount of weight but no that assumption is wrong protein contains 50% dry weight of any cell so the protein are divided uh, into three types like according to their structure and their function the uh, first one is globular protein which helps in the metabolism of any cell uh fibrous protein which provides the structure structural stability of any uh, cell as well as our muscles and membrane protein that is used for the receptor as well as uh, they are uh, use uh, they are uh, generally the receptor or they are uh, hormones something like uh, that uh, that is very helpful for uh, for the metabolism and uh, as we all know proteins are made up of long amino acid chain which are generally known as peptide chain so here is some brief about peptide chain what is that peptide uh, chain is made up of different type of amino acids and long peptide chain is also known as polypeptide chain short peptide chain are uh, made up of 10 uh, sorry short or oligopeptide chain is made up of 10 to uh, 30, uh, 10 to 12 amino acid amino acid as like uh, dna dna having uh, the purines and pyrimidines uh, are the building blocks of the dna so as like dna protein having the building blocks that is amino acid and there are more than 300 amino acids are known till today but only 20 took part in our metabolism and showing our uh, showing our character showing our expression uh, and each and every type of catabolism metabolism anabolism it takes part in that so we concluded that 20 amino acid into standard amino acids so um, uh, standard amino acid is very uh, important uh, for growth as well as for metabolic reactions and the last one is how polypeptide uh, chain uh, is made up of so polypeptide uh, chain is made up of uh, 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 made up by the process of condensation and they produces the peptide bonds between uh, here is the wait i'll show this okay so in this diagram 
this is the chiral carbon which is a basic uh, this is the alpha carbon and this is the amino and this one is carboxylic carbon so the bond between the last of first amino acid and uh, first of second amino acid is formed that bond is known as peptide bond and this is covalent bond between nitrogen and uh, carbon atom and these both uh, bonds that are showing phi or psi these bonds are uh, responsible for the rotation of particular amino acid that uh, description is given in the ramachandran plot so here is basics of amino acid how, how what is the structure of amino acid amino acid contain a carbon which is connected uh, by the carboxyl group on the right hand side and in the left hand side it, it is connected by the amino group and alkyl group with the uh, uh, second direction uh, on the second uh, dimension and hydrogen carbon or any alkyl uh, side chain that is on the third direction third dimension so uh, this, uh, this this is the structure of normal amino acid and uh, when uh, your amino acid is amino group is present in the left then it will be uh, uh, it will be the proper amino acid which is present uh, which is normally present but in theoretically in the ramachandran plot they are saying that right handed uh, amino acid are also present but that is only theoretically possible not practically and each amino acid is not present in the neutral form so at the 7 ph they are forming zwitter ion what is that zwitter ion contains both the ion at the same time but if you are, if you are going uh, to change the ph of the amino acid so like if you are going to degrade sorry to uh, decrease the uh, ph as like 2 3 then it uh, shows the positively ion and if you are going for alkaline uh, ph then it will be showing the negative ion and this is the structure which you can uh, generally see in the three dimension so uh, the amino acid uh, are divided on the basis on of their structure or on the basis of their side alkaline alkali side chain so on the basis of side chain like they are divided into four categories that is polar and non polar some are hydrophobic uh, and some are hydrophilic so hydrophilic and what is the difference between between hydrophilic and hydrophobic nothing that is hydrophilic is hydrogen loving or we can say that polar that uh, uh, that will uh, wait polar are those that will produces the hydrogen bonding with water ions okay and non polar are those which are not interact with water ions and on the basis of their structure like if they are aliphatic or aromatic and on the basis of their charge if they are uh, negatively charged or they are positively charged so they are the 20 amino acids in which the starting two uh, comes in polar but they are negatively charged that is aspartic acid and glutamic acid and these three are uh, positively charged and these are uncharged but they are pol polar and here they are uh, non polar amino acids so there are classification amino acid can be classified into two categories first is essential amino acid and second was the um, one is non essential so what is essential essential are those which our body is not applicable for their synthesis so we have to take uh, them from the external uh, external source so these comes in essential and non essential are those that uh, our body synthesize itself with the use of essential amino acid but there are eight amino acid which comes in essential amino acid and two are two comes in semi essential because they uh, are present in the adult but not in the child and non essential as i told you that they are these amino acid which will be synthesized by our body uh, with the use of that essential amino acid or we can say that that, that is the secondary product of essential amino acid Which are body synthesized. So when whenever you are going for the uh, technique, uh, so you should know what is the purpose of this uh, you, that you are going to do. So purification, why it is required? Purification of protein, 
is essential for study of particular protein like if you are going to isolate or if you are going to uh, produce a vaccine for a virus okay so you should know that uh, structure of that cascade and their spike proteins etc etc so that are only made up of protein and you have to know that particular uh, you have to know and you have to study about that so for that purpose we have to purify the protein to know the structure and function of that protein and for changing its structure and function in recombinant dna technology as i told you in the last session uh, in the yesterday that uh, they produces the vector okay so in that vector they incorporate a gene of a particular uh, the uh, particular gene that is of uh, your interest so what that gene uh, when you are going to uh, uh, see the uh, uh, expression of any gene so what do you you will do you will firstly do uh, the uh, you will firstly isolate the protein that is synthesized by that particular gene after that you are going for the further study so that is used for the mass production of proteins like antibody hormones enzymes etc that is, that have as a very essential uses in our daily life to so study the protein protein interaction and protein regulation as i told you uh, for the mass production of hormones for some hormones are uh, also made up of uh, proteins so we have to uh, just study about the protein protein interaction because when a hormone interact with each other then it will uh, passes some signals so for that signaling so for uh, knowing that signaling how our brain or how our body is working for that purpose we have to purify the protein and also for x ray crystallography for knowing the structure of that protein so first step is you should know the desired uh, uh, desired proteins location as if you are going to isolate uh, the membrane uh, that is present outside the membrane so there is no uh, need of any technique uh, for separation like disruption and all you will all uh, you will also using some chemicals or enzyme for separating out and for uh, purification so if a protein present in transduce form in the membrane then only the membrane is required for the degradation not 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 uh, for degradation of any organelle or nuclear membrane something like that okay so but if a protein present inside the cell then various techniques would be used for the purification because it will uh, fluctuate the viscosity and it will uh, contain more and more impurities so you have to do uh, um, purification technique for that purpose so here are the, the some steps like media preparation sterilization fermentation and cell harvesting which uh, you were discuss which were discussed uh, yesterday and this process comes in the upstream processes after that cell debris removal protein solution concentration final purification and product this come in the downstream processing which we have to concentrate on because we are going to purify a particular protein so for that purpose we have to uh, focus on downstream processing rather than upstream so there are three steps for isolation of protein or for purification of protein the first one is solubilization of proteins the second uh, solubilization can be done with the help of ultrasonication uh, centrifugation etc that will be discussed in the next slide and stabilization of proteins because if you isolated a protein and it will not be stabilized that mean it uh, will denature itself or by it will catalyzing so there is no need of uh, purification it will not showing that particular result that you want the third step is purification of protein after stabilization further go for the purification of protein because there are a number of proteins so you have to purify a particular protein that you want so first one is solubilization of protein solubilization of protein is done by the cell disruption that is you can uh, disrupt the cell by the use of ultrasonication by the french press or by enzymatic methods or we can say uh, these method is used for the uh, cell membrane degradation as well as 
uh, it will uh, isolate the um, proteins that are present outside the cell. Chemical methods, and here is freeze thaw, freeze thawing, homogenization, bead mill, thermal methods, and last will be centrifugation. You can disturb the cell with all these type of methods. There is second step, which is stabilization of protein. So why it is needed? It is needed for maintaining the structure of protein. So for uh, maintaining the structure, pH should be monitored. Temperature should be maintained. And for maintaining the structure from denaturation or for catalyze, catalyzing, um, so different methods are used for, from which salting out is one of them. Salting out method in which uh, we are using the dialysis bag which contains a small pores or semi-permeable for small uh, small particles. In that, salt is filled with that protein. So the uh, salts and that proteins are uh, coming out or in in, uh, in the process, uh, which process is known as osmosis, OK? So what is the salting uh, out process? It is a purification method that utilizes the reduced solubility of certain molecules in a solution of very high ionic strength. So salting out is typically but not limited to the precipitation of large biomolecules such as protein. So we have to precipitate to stabilize the protein. After that, third step is purification and that is very important step for every protein. As like if you are going to isolate a antibody enzyme or hormones or any type of protein. So these steps should be taken, like purification is done with the, nowadays we are using chromatography because it is very effective for a particular protein. It is a laboratory technique, which is used to separate desired product from a mixture. And this technique is used for the separation of amino acid, protein and carbohydrate. It is also used for the analysis of drugs. Drugs are sometimes uh, proteins. Hormones that are also sometimes proteins and vitamins that have cofactors like protein. Helpful for the qualitative and quantitative analysis of complex mixtures. And the last one is the technique is used for the determination of molecular weight of protein. So what is the principle of chromatography? Chromatography usually consists of two phases. That is, one is mobile phase in which uh, our mixture is present and a stationary phase, which is made up of different type of matrices. The mobile phase refers to the mixture of substance to be separated, dissolved in a liquid, as well as a gas. The stationary phase, as I told you, is a porous solid matrix through which the sample contained in the mobile phase percolates. The interaction between the mobile phase and the solid phase or the stationary phase result in the separation of compound from the mixture. So there are uh, so many type of chromatography. First one is paper chromatography. Second is thin layer chromatography. Third is gel, column, and exchange, gel filtration, and affinity. So if, if I'm going to uh, describe about the chromatography, the paper chromatography, graphy, and uh, thin layer chromatography uh, does not help in the purification. But there is a basic concept of any chromatography, which I want to discuss about, uh, uh, which is the basic uh, concept. How our uh, particular or desired product should be uh, purified. So this is the paper chromatography in which uh, here is the mixture. Uh, this is uh, a chromatographic paper, or we can use the filter paper as well. So in, in, in this filter paper, there is a solvent. And here uh, it is sealed. And this paper is hanged on that, uh, uh, on that uh, lead. OK, so uh, this is the droplet which we placed and that is a mixture of a solvent a mixture of a component from which we have to uh, separate out our desired uh, mix uh, de uh, desired uh, product 
so for that when uh, when a mixture uh, passes through the cellulosic membrane and it will like uh, separating uh, in different pigments so these pigments are showing the separation so this method in this method if you are going to take uh, the this this one so the rf value is required because rf shows the uh, proper name of, uh, of that particular product which is in uh, standard table which is present in the standard tables and in uh, thin layer chromatography we used uh, a slide in which uh, in this technology we have to know the adsorbent capacity how they adsorb on the stationary phase so thin layer chromatography is a laboratory technique but it is similar to uh, paper chromatography it contains slide on the place of uh, slide on a glass slide on the place of paper and it involves a stationary phase of a thin layer of adsorbent like silica gel alumina and cellulose and compared to paper it has the advantage of faster run better separation and the choice between different adsorbent so this is is column chromatography it is also known as adsorption chromatography which is used for the separation of protein and column chromatography is uh, used uh, for the separation uh, in which the, it contains a stationary bed within the tube or within the column so adsorbent are packed into a column in a glass tube and this serves as a stationary phase leaving an open unrestricted path for the mobile phase in the middle of the tube so uh, in this step adsorbents are used like silica gel alumina or sometimes we are using uh, so, uh, calcium uh, calcium uh, lime soda lime so charcoal powder and calcium hypoxyapatite uh, are also used the sample mixture in a solvent is loaded on the top of the col column and the individual components compounds that get differentially adsorbed on the adsorbent wait i'll show you the diagram from which you can easily understand what i want to say for that so first one is that this is the column okay in this the stationary bed is present which is ma uh, made up of silica or as i uh, told you uh, as i mentioned that uh, solvents so here we load the sample and this is the stationary phase so sample will run out from this due to the uh, gravitational force and then it will be separated on the different layer and different colors it will be showing so when it will come and reach to this point open this valve and collect it separately and identify which material is this okay so this is the column chromatography and this and this is used conventionally but uh, according to uh, according to that principle there are uh, some new chromatography as you are used in which one is ion exchange chromatography as i told you about the uh, amino acid charges so ion exchange is better way to uh, uh, separate out or to uh, purify that protein like it is used as an exchanger mechanism to separate molecules on the basis of their electrical charges if you are going to uh, purify a negatively charged amino acid then the stationary phase contain the uh, positively charged material or resin that uh, that will uh, produces a ionic bond between both and the aleut will come out from the column like this ion exchange chromatography used a charge stationary phase a stationary phase which contains the charge to separate charged compounds including anions cations amino acid peptide and proteins cation exchanger and anion exchanger resins are used that are ion exchange resins in conventional methods the stationary phase is an ion exchange resin that carries charged functional groups that interact with oppositely charged groups of the compound retains so here is the diagram from which you can easily understand what the concept is here is the stationary phase which is charged which is positively charged okay so we put our mixture of amino acid in this column when we put 
the amino acid which contains negatively charged will bind together and forming a ionic bond and that are uh, that having the same charges will repel and they come out from the column so that separation will take place in the form of ionic exchange chromatography so they forming the covalent bond and further for uh, we are isolating that uh, from the column the stationary phase second one is gel filtration there are so many names of gel filtration like size exclusion chromatography it is also known as permeation chromatography or gel filtration chromatography that separates the molecule according to their size shape and molecular weight as like electrophoresis you are using agar agar in this also we are using gel for uh, 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 for uh, filtration so it is also refer as molecular sieving or molecular exclusion chromatography there are n number of names of this so don't be confused in the name they all are same the smaller molecules are able to enter the pores of the media and therefore molecules are trapped and removed from the flow of the mobile phase as i will uh, discuss uh, i will describe with the help of uh, diagram however molecules that are larger than the average pore size of the packaging are excluded and thus suffer essentially no retention such species are the first to be eluted this is how the molecules are separated how and what are they telling that told like this this is the column which contains gel uh, filtration resin and this is our um, initial mixture of large and small molecule so we are having this type of gels uh, gel resin so the molecular uh, so the size of uh, uh, if size is in uh, more than this size then it will be eluted first but if size compared to uh, size is uh, uh, is equal to or less than uh, uh, the size of that uh, permeable gel uh, trap it and it will passes on the basis of their record in the basis of their molecular weight size then they pass uh, after uh, this so the small molecules are included and elute last and that last molecules eluted are our purified proteins or purified amino acids and why it is used it is used for determining the tertiary structure and quaternary structure of purified protein especially since it can be carried out under native solution conditions as like electrophoresis uh, dna passes through uh, the gel as like same the amino acids are passing through the gel and eluted in this chromatography what is affinity chromatography there is only a minute difference between ion exchange and affinity ion exchange contain ions with they with their stationary phase but in affinity chromatography it contains like if you are going to isolate or purify a enzyme then it contains substrate on that place uh, okay if you are going to isolate a antibody then it will contain antigen of the antibody in the stationary phase and if you are going to isolate a receptor then it will contain the ligand in between them so what is that affinity is based affinity chromatography is based on selective non covalent interaction between an analyte and a specific molecules referred to as ligands this is this is the theory of affinity chromatography but the simple concept which i told you uh, you can uh, easily understand with this this is a column and this column contains a matrix and that matrix contains ligands for a receptor antigen for antibody and substrate for a enzyme then it will produces fish hook like structure and the rest uh, rest eludes are eluted out from the column because it will never it will never bind that particular ligand or particular substrate or for particular uh, antigen so after that the last one is hplc hplc is uh, a liquid chromatography thus uh, further that i uh, discussed the uh, chromatography are solid or 
liquid uh, chromatography, but this is liquid chromatography, and it is separation technique uh, in which the mobile phase is a liquid. Liquid chromatography uh, uh, can be carried out either in a column or a plane. So the waste comes out in the liquid medium. Uh, the present day liquid chromatography generally utilizes very small packing particles and relatively high pressure is referred as to uh, high performance uh, liquid chromatography and we are also saying this the uh, high pressure liquid chromatography it contains um, since the chromatography technique was slow so and that was so time taking so for uh, concluding this this is the new technique which is used the high pressure for moving the elute uh, outside the uh, column, which is very fast. And the pressure ranges in between 5,000 to 6,000 PSI. Generally, we are giving 6,000 uh, PSI pressure for proteins. Hence, this uh, technique is also known as uh, high pressure liquid chromatography. You can say both high performance and high pressure. So, in HPLC, the sample is forced by the liquid as a 